Our next guest is a uh, Grammy award-winning rock star, an enormously successful tequila tycoon, and a passionate spokesperson for those unable to stay below the speed limit. This is his New York Times best-selling book. It was number one. It's called Red, My Uncensored Life in Rock. Please say hello to Sammy Hagar. <laughs> I think best-selling author. <laughs> First thing that comes to mind. You know what? I would have to need a mirror to agree with you on that. I have you, to see what you're seeing. Because did you ever imagine that that would be the case? Never in a hundred years. It, it was. I swear, it was a bigger surprise than a Grammy, than a number one record, than than joining Van Halen, than yeah. you know, selling my tequila company for a zillion dollars. And, uh, that would just blew my mind. They called and said, "Guess what? Number one." I, I just, I almost cried, man. And why would you write a book like this when you really, Oops. you don't need the money, certainly. You don't well, need the attention. You don't you need any know. of that stuff. You never know. <laughs> really? You've blown through all that tequila money already? <laughs> no, I blew through the tequila. Oh, you did. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I really wanted to tell my story, you know. And part of it, I know it sounds like a joke, but while I really remembered everything, you know, my mind is still sound. And I see my brother's three years older than me, and his is not. So I got gotcha. you. I said, you, you know, said you better no, do I'm this joking. quickly. Now, I, I what is, being your brother and your whole family, what does your family think of the like, this, all the sex stories and the, all the craziness? Have they read the book? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to admit, my ex-wife and my son from my ex-wife is back there right now. And uh -huh. I always ask, hey, how's mom doing? He goes. She's pissed, Pop. <laughs> really? She, you know, the, it, it was so hard beca because, you know, we were married a long time, and here I'm in a rock, I'm, you know, in a rock band my whole life. We, we were childhood sweethearts and all that. So, you know, I went through it all, and I was good for a long time. I, I think I'm probably one How of the best rock good? stars ever. <laughs> really? And, You're complimenting uh, yourself for that? But once the marriage felt like it was over, I went nuts for you about did. five years. I did. And she had no idea? No. Wow. Well, she probably did, but, you know, we never never got into it. And, and I, I was honest in the book. I really wanted to come clean, and, and I... I know she's not happy, but I, I said, I said, you know, <laughs> you know, your mom's. I told my son, I said, your mom's gonna probably really be mad. He's going, pop. She couldn't think any less of you. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's kind of like, okay, you know. I'm you, good. Are, you have young children too, right? Yeah, well, yeah. my yeah, my my wife now uh -huh. uh, said you aren't gonna put that in a book about ten times. I made something special for you, and I want you to keep this in your house. And now this is um, the book is my uncensored life. This is your censored life. This you can give. <laughs> This you can give to your family, and basically the whole thing it says, Sammy Hagar was raised in Fontana, California. And that's the end. Hold on. Yes! So that you can take. I appreciate that. And if they ever want to pick it up, they'll see that dad had really no problem. Did you read the book? You read the book, right? Yes, I did read the book. Okay, here, you can have this teacher. Oh, thank you, all right. Well, the book, the unbelievable, the part that... I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff, but I'm most interested, I think, in that relationship between you and Eddie Van Halen because uh, it, it, it seemed like a horrible relationship. And no, yet... no, it was fantastic. <laughs> it was. No, for, for, for 10 years, I swear, my dearest friend, my greatest writing partner ever until, you know, now, I mean, with the chicken foot, we were, chicken foot was on here. Joe yeah. Sartre is a great writing partner, so I'm not saying thank you. But Eddie and I, we wrote some of the greatest songs in r American rock history together. Well, you know, no, right no now, question Pound about Cake, that. you know, Top of the World. And... It just went wrong. It's just like a marriage. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Chapter 14. Is it, uh -huh. uh, you know, when a Chapter marriage goes wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when a marriage goes wrong, it's the same thing in a band. You know, you get these people, and pretty soon it just became, I want it black. No, I want it white. Okay, white. No, if you want it white, I want it black. Then okay, mm -hmm. well, then let's go black. Then. No, I want it white now. You know, couldn't, just couldn't agree on anything. Broke up. Ten years later, did a reunion tour. And it was the biggest mess of anything I've ever done. And I, and I wanted it to be so great. And yep. I wanted to be friends again. I wanted to be a great band again. And it wasn't. So but we, you we've still never spoken hold out hope that that will happen again. You said that oh, yeah. you thought there was a 90% chance that you would tour with Van Halen. Well, again. there's only two singers that, for that band. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's not like they can bring in some new guy again. They what about that. the guy from Extreme? They could bring him back, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't. Okay. <laughs> They've done everything else wrong. No, you know, so I think it was only... <laughs> well, they have. Yes, they have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do the math. Yeah. So, but I, I really think that there's only two singers for that band, and if they, if Ed now really want to play music for the rest of their lives, they're eventually going to have to come back and say, Sammy, you want to do it again? And if it's cool, I would do it in a second. I you love would. that band. You would. It's the greatest band ever.
if it's cool. Now, something that's been getting a lot of attention, a lot of attention is the story of the alien encounter that yeah. you had. Uh -huh. Is it in here? Is it in this version? No, I've taken that out, too. I don't want the kids <laughs> to get any, any ideas. But um, what I thought, rather than have you explain it again, because I think, you, well, you certainly explained it in the book, and rather than have you go through it again, um, we would we reenact it on videotape. <laughs> so um, If this ruins my career, folks, I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> okay. I'll be held responsible for this. But um, here we go. This is the alien encounter as it happened. I was lying in bed one night at the Anastasia Street place in Fontana, asleep, dreaming. I saw a ship and two creatures inside of this ship. I couldn't see their faces. I just knew that there were two intelligent creatures. They were connected to me, tapped into my mind through some kind of mysterious wireless type connection. They said in their communication to each other, oh, he's waking up. We've got to go, we've got to go. Bleep, 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 bleep. I can drive, 55! I opened my eyes real quick. My whole room was white. My wife was lying next to me asleep. Honey, wake up, wake up, I said. And that's how I became a believer.